I went to the hospital with two legs and I left with just the one. I never needed to lose my leg. How did doctors get things so wrong that they ended up amputating this woman's leg? It all started when Molly went into hospital after experiencing a bit of leg pain. I kept getting fobbed off each and every time. Oh, you're fine, it's fine. There's nothing to worry about. But deep down I knew there was. And I wish now that someone had listened to me. But they didn't listen, so Molly kept going back as the pain got increasingly worse. I went to the hospital. I was in a lot of pain. I couldn't really walk. From this point, Molly was transferred to three different hospitals in total, causing a 16-hour delay in the treatment of her leg. The junior doctor at the first hospital misdiagnosed me. He didn't do the proper checks. I'm a type 1 diabetic as well, so he should have checked for some things, more things, and um, he didn't. So I got transferred from that hospital to another hospital. At the second hospital, they not only picked up that she had blood clots in her legs, probably as the result of her diabetes, they also found out she had a hole in her heart. But the hospital transfer merry-go-round wasn't over yet. And then I got transferred to the third hospital to remove the blood clots that I had. I went into surgery expecting a quick hour or two. I got woken up 36 hours later to be shown that they had amputated my leg above the knee. Because of the initial misdiagnosis and the transfer delays, surgeons could no longer restore the blood flow to Molly's lower left leg, which meant that amputation was the only option. All I can remember is breaking down, crying, begging for my life to end. But Molly's medical nightmare didn't end there. Five days later, I was in excruciating pain, crying to the doctors again and it turned out I had sepsis. So they rushed me back into theatre, rang my parents, letting them know that it's touch and go now. I've got to fight for my life. Thankfully, Molly survived the sepsis and began living her life as an amputee. It's difficult coming to terms with the fact that I could have what people say a normal life. I could just get up on a morning and walk to the toilet, brush my teeth and run out the door. I can't do that no more and that is because of this. And it doesn't even fit. Life's never going to be the same, it's never going to be simple. But I get on with it. That's all you can do. The hospital later admitted that Molly's leg could have been saved if the surgery had been performed earlier. Knowing that it could have been prevented is a really big pill to swallow and I'm still trying to come to terms with it four years on and I wish now that someone had listened to me. For Molly, it's all about moving on and that includes walking down the aisle with her husband. Life's good now. I'm married, finally. I met a great man. I've got my home. But I don't want that to happen to someone else. I'm seen. Are you?